Hi guys, I'm Phil Sturpey. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up IAM groups and users for Amazon Web Services developers. Now I have shown how to create an IAM user before in an earlier demo, but I want to focus on creating a user for development purposes, because there are a couple of things we need to bear in mind. And it is IAM users we want to be using rather than the root account, because the last thing you should be doing is using the root account for any kind of development, given the trail you're going to leave behind. Let me connect to the IAM service in the console. As you can see, I've already got a number of groups and users. If you imagine that we had a team of developers who are shortly going to start work on an application, we'll be adding them in, in here. But the last thing we want to do is assign these individual users any privileges. And that's why we have groups. So I'm going to start with a group. I'm going to create a group called developers. As I've already suggested, you don't want to be giving permissions to individual users because that is simply not going to scale. As new users arrive, you're going to have to assign them permissions. So it makes sense to give the permissions or privileges to a group and simply assign users or place users into groups as required. Another important consideration is that you apply the principle of least privilege. Now when this dialog pops up, it's expecting me to specify the permissions for my group, the developers group. Now the developers don't need to have full admin access to the entire AWS cloud. In fact, the team I've got in mind just need to be able to read and write from S3, and in particular, one bucket. So rather than use any of these set pieces, which are going to grant a wide range of privileges to the group, I'm going to select Policy Generator. If I click this button, I can pick the service, and it's just going to be S3. So let me scroll down and find S3. As for actions, well, I'll allow all actions. Now, rather than grant all access to S3 to the group, I just want to restrict it to one specific bucket. So I can paste in the ARN here to a bucket I have called QA Cookbooks. And in the ARN, I've not needed to mention the region, which is optional, because bucket names are globally unique, nor have I had to mention the account number that goes with my root account. And once again, that's because a bucket name is globally unique. So if I click Add Statement now, and then Continue, here we can see the policy that I'm granting to this group, Developers. So I'll go ahead and create the group. There we have it. So I have a group. It has just the privileges that it needs. And now I can come and create some users. In fact, for this demo, I'm just going to create one user. So I'm going to create a user, and that user is Frank. Now the important thing here is that we generate an access key for each user. That checkbox is on by default, and we do need this set. We don't necessarily need access keys for typical users who come in via the console, but for developers we do, because they quite often need to use these keys within the scripts that they write. So I've made sure that's checked. I click Create. Now what we need to focus on here is the text in bold. This is the last time we'll be able to download these credentials. There are actually two keys, the access key and the secret key. If I just reveal them here, access key, secret key. In future, in the console, we'll be able to view the access key, but this is the last time we'll be able to access the secret key. So we need to download those credentials now. This will be the last time we'll be able to do it. So I'll hit download credentials. If I just show this in the folder, it's giving me a CSV file. Um, if I just open that, I'll do that with, try it with Notepad, that'll do. So we've got the username, that's fine, but there we have the access key and we have the secret key. As I say, developers will need this if they're going to write scripts or in fact, if they're going to configure Eclipse or Visual Studio with the AWS toolkit so that Eclipse and Visual Studio can connect to the cloud on their behalf. So now that I've downloaded that file, I can close the window. There you have it. In this video, I've shown you how simple it is to create an IAM group and apply the principle of least privilege to it. Create a user, assign it to the group, and at the same time, store a copy of the access key and secret key for later use. In later videos, I'll show you how to use the access key and secret keys within Visual Studio and Eclipse 
to help perform development tasks. Thanks for watching and please feel free to comment on my blog and Facebook page. Perhaps you could suggest more video topics and most of all don't forget to subscribe to keep up with my videos as I release them. Bye for now.